Hi everyone, I'm Dihua from Wiser Michael. In today's video, I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to perform a hydraulic disc brake bleeding. And I've got here a Shimano MT200. It's a flat bar disc brake, hydraulic disc brake. And the reason why I need to do a bleeding for this is that the brake isn't functioning very well now. So a normal working condition brake is like the brake on my right hand, which is my rear brake. It has got a travel of about half the distance and it will come to a firm stop when I pull the lever. But on the left hand brake lever, which is my front brake, I can pull it all the way down and it still feels very spongy. Now this will be a telltale sign for us that this needs a little bit of servicing which in this case is to bleed it. There could be some bubble inside this hose or the system or there could be some leakage of the brake fluid. And therefore we're going to do a bleeding for this side of the brake today. So these are the tools that I'll be using. A 5mm Allen key, 2mm Allen key, long nose plier, T15 Tox key, a bleed syringe, the bleed funnel, a piston block, rubber band to hold the piston block, and a Falco strap. Also, I will be using a plastic bag for the waste mineral oil and a zip tie. And of course, I will need fresh brake fluid. And for my case, the Shimano MT200, it uses mineral oil and specifically it is mineral oil for Shimano. Of course, uh, for other brakes, you may have different fluid requirements. Some use dot fluids. While for Magura, they will also have their own brake fluid, which is the Magura Royal Blood. So before you start, remember to wear a protective glove. And that's just to prevent your hand from getting into contact of this mineral oil, which some of you might have allergy to. Right, so first of all, let us prepare the syringe and I'm going to fill this up with the brake fluid. You can pull the syringe slowly, do not be too fast. You just pull it slowly so that there will be less bubble inside. Okay, so at the end, uh, you realize that there will still be some air that is trapped here. So what I'll do is just turn the syringe upside down and slowly press the syringe so that the bubbles will be released and all back into the bottle itself okay and then i'll just uh, do it one more time to fill up the syringe just repeat this process one more time okay once the syringe is prepared you can actually put it aside first the next step i'll do is to prepare the brake lever so again remember the left side is the one that we want to do remove the cap from the bleed pot and when you remove it do remember to remove the o-ring as well after which i will insert the bleed funnel so um, just remember that you don't have to turn the bleed funnel very tight it doesn't have to be very tight but because there is also a o-ring to seal it now the next step is to remove the brake caliber I have my front wheel on a stand, on an L stand, so that the wheel won't be turning left and right and just increase to make it more stable when I'm working. I have the disc caliber removed. Next, I will be removing the brake pad. Now this step is very important because you have to remove the brake pad just to be sure that your brake pad won't come into contact with the brake fluid because if it does it may contaminate your brake pad and once you install it in it may contaminate your disc rotor as well okay so remember to remove the brake pad and insert the piston block okay in this case i don't need the rubber band i will have to use the pin to make sure the piston block do not fall out during the process of bleeding and now i'm ready to do the bleeding okay now next step we have to remove the this is a rubber cap on the big pot remove it insert the syringe 
tube onto the bleed port. So for the Shimano MT200, uh, the system works in this way. This is the nipple where the brake fluid will, can go in and out where you perform the bleeding, where you can actually bleed the mineral oil in. And to open and close this split port, you is through the screw over here. It's through this bolt. This is basically to open and close the split port. So I'll just open it. You can just turn it about one round or one and a half round. Okay, now it's done. And we can start pumping the brake fluid in. So remember to do it slowly. I got a bubble in, but it's fine because later on we'll push this bubble all the way out and it will come up from the top at the bleed funnel. So as I push here the syringe, you can see in the bleed funnel there should be fluid coming out. And sometimes you may see bubbles as well. And in the case that if you your hydraulic disc brake has been not has not hasn't been serviced for a long time. The brake fluid be inside for a long time. You may even see dirt in coming out. Take note that you shouldn't empty your syringe. Okay, you should not empty your syringe. Always leave a little bit. Otherwise, there could be chance of a bubble or air bubbles that's going into the system now. Okay, that's what we want to prevent. So at this point, I will close the bleed port. Just tighten the bolt here to close the bleed port okay you now it's closed and i can safely remove this syringe now from the nipple now we will remove the funnel and dispose away the old fluid that's been pumped out insert the funnel plug slowly unscrew the funnel and remove it now we can go and remove all the oil. Next, I'll put back the funnel. Once you have removed all the old and dirty brake fluid, I will insert the bleed funnel back and fill up the funnel with fresh fluid to about half to three quarter cup. Next, I will remove this because I just want to use the tube from the syringe insert it to the brick port nipple and the other end i will attach it to a waste plastic bag and fasten it with a zip tie that i have here okay so the next step is to actually let the brake fluid the fresh brake fluid in the funnel right now to flow down so that it can flow out and remove any possible bubble that is remaining inside the system any stubborn air bubbles inside so I'll open the brick plot now and you can see the brick fluid is flowing out okay so as you do this do also you can actually knock all these brick holes knock around so that in case there are some bubbles Make sure that the brake fluid in the funnel does not finish. You don't have to open the bleed port like a lot. You just open it for one round or half a round. And now I can tighten it. Right, the last step is pull back the lever and tie it up with a Velcro strap so that it is at the pull position. And now you can open and close quickly the brake port to let any remaining bubble come out. Remove the plastic bag with all the excess brake fluid. Lastly, we are done with the caliber and now we just want to make sure that there is no bubble that is stick inside this compartment here. So what we do is loosen the brake lever. We can actually now remove the Velcro strap. Tilt the angle and tip it up and down. At the same time, you can just squeeze a little bit at different angle. Yeah, so if there are some, there's any more bubble that come out, it will be released. Okay, when there is no more bubble, 
means we are safe to say that we got a system that is full of brake fluid and no room for bubbles and I'll tighten the brake lever put in the bleed funnel plug and remove it and close the cap remember to put the o-ring back and please take note that this bolt here is not supposed to be very very tight so if you have a torque meter maybe about one newton meter otherwise if you are not using any torque meter you just tidy it up a little bit okay so a rule of thumb is whenever you see a bolt that use very small allen keys or very small torx keys you don't have to apply a lot of force to tighten it it's not meant to be used with high torque remove the piston block now at this point of time there may be some oil that is spilled over on your brake caliper so before i replace the brake pads i will first clean it up a little bit wash it away wash the, the all the spillage i'll just use some soap clean it up So I'll also clean the lever side. The side on the lever, clean off all the spillage. And wipe it clean because um, well there's also a this is also a good practice because after that, if there's any leakage from around this place, around this pot, the big pot, you will be able to see if there's any fluid that's leaking out when you press the brick. Now, when you're really happy about the state of this, how clean it is and oil free, then we can put back the brake pads. Tighten the brake caliber back onto the frame. All right, so we are done. And as you can see, it is not so complicated. All you need is a little bit more patient and just follow the step by step. Uh, uh, do remember that at the end, do a check for us. At the start, we use the right side as a reference and now I'm using the right side as a reference again just to check whether the brake functioning very well. Yep, so it seems like they work pretty well now. Right, so here is the thing. The whole process is actually very simple and if you know what is the key objective, okay you know you see me pumping up the fluid from the bottom use a syringe pump it up and then uh, after that remove the dirty fluid and then put in new fluid and let it flow down and then move it here knock here knock there turn here turn there the whole idea is that we want to remove any bubbles inside this system so that the whole system is filled with brake fluid and when that happens, you have a very responsive hydraulic disc brake. And some tip for you, if at the end of your whole process and you still don't solve your issue, you still have the same problem, you can do it again. <laughs> okay, that's very straightforward. The number one thing that comes to your mind, you can do it again. And at the same time, observe closely on the system from the brake lever to the brake hose and all the way to the brake caliper itself just look closely to see if there's any oil stain or anywhere that you see there are oil flowing out when you especially when you pull the lever because that could be an indication that some part is damaged and if you don't replace those parts then no matter how many times you bleed it you will not solve the issue so how often do you need to do this bleeding that's a question that i often get uh, i think the, the a good practice will be to do it every once or twice a year depending on really how 
how heavy is your ride, how often do you ride. Or whenever that you feel like there is some abnormal functioning of your brakes, when you have a spongy brake lever like what I had earlier on, or when you see, or when you need to change a brake post for some matter, there's a, if there's a scratch or there's a damage, there's some leaking, you need to change it. That's when also you may need to do a, a, a new bleeding. All right, so that's all I have for you today for the hydraulic brake bleeding tutorial. Now do let us know if I've been not clear in any way and you need further explanation. I'll try to answer to that slow, but you will come, all right? And so, so drop your comment in the box below. And of course, do let me know also how we can improve our future tutorials in terms of even the camera angles, how we can make you see things clearer and understand it more straightforward, okay? All these are really precious comments to us, so thank you very much. And do remember to give us an encouragement by liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you, I'm Ti Hwan. See you again.